Hi. Okay, this is Lou. And it's the morning of the 13th, I believe, March 13th. I laid down earlier and took a little nap, I guess. And I kicked back on my bed and I drifted away. Easily done when you're tired. But I just did a video and I'm waiting for it to upload. And it's a different one. It's, um, I did a little reading out of The Pearl of Great Price. And it was called um, Joseph Smith slash Matthew. And so it was an extract from a translation he did of the Bible. Now, I don't know how much he did of the Bible. I got a lot to learn. So I should endeavor to find out. But anyway, in the Pearl of Great Price, it looks like it's just one. Maybe there's more. But uh, what I read was Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 23, verse 39, and then Matthew chapter 24. And it's talking about Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem. And then he also talks about the second coming, <clears throat> his second coming. And... Uh, fact that there will be false Christ here, there, and everywhere. You know, not to believe them. If they say Christ is over here, you don't believe it. And it talks about the signs of the times, and no man knoweth the hour or the day, and that the Son of Man will be coming like a thief in the night, meaning you're not going to be expecting him when he comes, okay? You can just kind of look for the signs that they've told throughout the scriptures of the last days. And they give the parable of the fig tree and how when the leaves are coming on, you know that summer is coming and et cetera. You know, so you can tell by the signs that the tree's putting out what's going on. Anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense. But I thought I'd get on here and just do a little um, video. Well, I'm waiting for that to upload. And yes, I've got the fan on. I'm in my room and the fan's on the lowest speed, but it's blowing my hair around. <clears throat> so I guess I need to go find some books. But I'm just not the best reader, as you guys can tell. Um, <clears throat> but there's all kinds of books that I'm not aware of. That I mean, that I haven't endeavored to read doctrines of salvation I think might be one I don't know but I know there's Joseph Smith history and I'd like to I'd like to learn about that but I just I hate all the bad things that happened it's hard to believe it's hard for me to believe that people can be so horrible the things that people did Satan stirred up the hearts of men, and alcohol helped, you know. Let's get that fire water in us and see what happens, and then let someone influence us to do bad. Joseph Smith went through so much. Him and his wife, his family, everybody was persecuted so bad. They came into his house and took him out and tarred and feathered him. His children, he lost so many children that had to do with that same stuff. You know, like they were taken out and the baby, I don't know what happened, but there was a baby in the crib or cradle or whatever that did not make it through it. I mean, there's movies you can watch. Um, and those, I'm sure, don't tell it exactly, but even those will hurt hurt me there's a movie called legacy that played at um, the joseph smith building for a long time joseph smith building is a big hotel across the street from the temple i think it used to be a hotel i don't think it is now i think it's more like office building 
but they play, um, they have a big old room that's got a huge screen that they play a movie in every, every day, every so many times a day. I don't know what's playing there now, <clears throat> but it's either The Legacy or Legacy played there for a long time. It's a really good movie. And then Testaments, The Testaments played there for a long time too. And then I believe Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration played there also. So those are really good movies or they wouldn't be playing there. They're about an hour long, I think. I'm not really sure. Seems like it. The Testaments is really, really, really good. That covers the ground from, it shows Jesus doing his, <clears throat> excuse me, his ministry and probably his crucifixion and stuff over in Jerusalem. And then it shows in America what's going on over here during the same time frame. Because the people in America was not called America back then. I'm not sure what they called it, but it was the promised land. But uh, I will just say the children of God knew he was coming, knew that Jesus was coming when the time the sign was supposed to be given and all that stuff. Anyway, so that movie, The Testaments, will go back and forth from both, I'll say worlds, okay? The other country, Jerusalem, and then our country. I'll call it the promised land, I guess but it shows everything. You no know, right from the, the sign being given of Jesus's birth and then um, his crucifixion, what happened during that. And then after he was resurrected, he showed himself over here to these people. The great white God, you've heard about that, I'm sure in history. I don't know if they tell you in history because they don't want to tell you anything about God. You know, we don't want to know the truth about God, do we? Anyway, it's a really, really good movie. So, The Testaments, you can look it up on YouTube. I'm sure you can watch it on YouTube. It doesn't have to just be... I mean, you can go to LDS.org and probably find it to watch. I'm not sure. You can find a lot of things at LDS.org to help you. Dot org to help you learn stuff but I've always liked movies that's a really good way of learning and so that's what these are all about I'll give you some good insight now <clears throat> there is a book series called the work in the glory and I'm not sure if it's seven volumes or if it's more it's a fictional it's not fiction, but it is, okay? They put a fictional family in there, and they tell a story so that you can, it takes you right there. You become part of that story. And you understand a lot of things while, by the time you're done. But it's about Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram, and it's about the, the beginning, the first vision, and getting the plates and translating the book and all the things that they went through with the adversary. Because Satan don't want that book out. He knows all about that book. Satan is privy to all kinds of things that we know not of. Anyway, the work in the glory, I highly endorse that. It's by Gerald Lund. He's an excellent author. He knows how to put you right there. You are right there involved. <clears throat> <clears throat> Feeling it, you know. It's really good. So I highly recommend that people in the church, members of the church, if you've not endeavored to go over that, that would be really good for you. It really helps build your testimony back up if you're wavering any at all. Really, really good. Now, he's got some other books out that I haven't 
I did do the Kingdom and the Crown series. That is really good, too. And that is all to do with Jesus, okay? It takes you back there, and it puts you right there with Jesus and what's going on. So, if you get a chance for that, that's three books. When I endorsed that on here earlier some time ago, but see... I met a lady here, the new caregiver today, and I asked her if she knew anything, if she'd ever heard of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it turns out that she is actually a member of the church, but she hadn't been in years and years and years because she was married to the guy that didn't want to go, like I was. So she was married to him for 15 years, so she's been away a long time. But it turns out, I mean, yeah, can't remember what she said. I believe her mother was a member of the church and her husband was an atheist. I mean, how in the heck can you have a good marriage like that? And they stayed together all them years, so I don't know. I don't know how a good member of the church can be married to an atheist and have a, a decent relationship. Because it's all important that you believe the same, especially that particular thing. It is difficult. You know, it's really difficult being married to someone who doesn't believe the same as you do. Try not to do that, guys. Try not to rob yourself of your heritage. You know, the church is really important. It really is. And to be married to somebody who's totally against it really sucks. And it usually brings the woman down because she submits. The man gets his way. And the woman doesn't want to go and do what, you know, she's got to do by herself. And I guess it would tear them apart if she did. But anyway, I just think it's a good testimony builder if you're already a member of the church and you have not been through the work and the glory. You can get them at the library. You can get them on audiobook. That's the best way. When I first was in, introduced to it, it, we had cassette tapes. And some of the cassette tapes would chew up in my machine. So that wasn't cool. So you, But you can get them on CD, if that's what they're called. Anymore, I don't know. But they're so worth it. And if you, if you had a group where you could just, because they're spendy, but if you had a group where you could all go together on it and share it, but otherwise you can get it from the library, okay? You might have to order it in. Not every library has it, but it's excellent. Both The Kingdom and the Crown, it's a series of three. I'm trying to remember what it says. Maybe the first one says, come follow me. Or maybe it's fishers of men. It's something similar. And in the end, I think it's behold the man. Just can't remember, but it just, it puts you right there. It's just really good. Okay, that's for everybody who's into Jesus. But if you are a member of the church or want to learn about the church and its beginnings and stuff, the work in the glory is really good. Even though part of it is fictional, most of it is not. You know, it's a blend so that we can get the story out. He did such a good job. All right, that's enough of that. Um, I know I do need a list of things to talk about. <clears throat> that I am endeavoring. Endeavoring not to have my lip go inside my mouth while I talk. <laughs> that is still an experiment. Um, I guess really I should just say I think a lot of times my videos get shut off because lately I've been running out of memory right in the middle of what I'm saying. 
<clears throat> and I know on one of the videos I was saying I think the last thing I said is I believe in Joseph Smith I believe in the power of God and the gift that he had to translate and it's kind of personal to me because my patriarchal blessing told me that I will have the same spirit upon me that was upon Joseph Smith when he translated the plates. When I teach the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon is what was translated from those golden plates. So me and Joseph Smith have a kindred spirit spirit of prophecy understanding I'm supposed to teach to teach the Book of Mormon and I am supposed to have the same spirit of prophecy upon me that Joseph Smith had as I teach the Book of Mormon so understanding Spirit of prophecy, a lot of it is understanding. Being able to understand what you read. You must endeavor. You must try. It's not easy. But hopefully I can teach you guys enough that you'll know it's true. That you'll want to look it up. Want to find out for yourself. It's very important very important that we find out what the deal is you know that's why this book is about in other words it was saved for this time and I believe <clears throat> that a 200 year space of time is uh, relevant somehow okay and so I've been trying to tell you guys a little bit you know like um, the first vision was in 1820 The church was organized, I believe, in 1830. The Kirkland Temple opened in 1836. <clears throat> and that's where a lot of marvelous things happened. Okay. Jesus appeared there. Angels appeared there. They saw angels on the roof of the temple. There were spirits all over the place at the opening of that temple. And the temple, I don't remember how many I heard the other day saying like 300 and some odd temples are dotting the earth. They're either in construction or already working. Very important. And the temple is where the ordinances are done. meaning we can take out our endowment, which is a gift from God, and we can be married or sealed, whichever the case may be, because if you're already married, then you go and just be sealed. But you can be sealed to your husband or your wife for time and all eternity, and your children will be yours. Now, if you already have children, they'll probably have to go through a ceremony too where they're sealed to you, but all the children that are born of the covenant are automatically sealed to you. It's a very important thing. So in the temple, work for the dead is being done. Not just for the living, but for the dead. You go and you do your work for yourself, and then every time you go after that, you're doing the work for somebody else who is dead. Because the work has to be done here on earth. And then they have the right to choose, you know, yay or nay, whatever, but at least the work is done. And they're up there waiting for the work to be done, okay? So it's very important. Genealogy is part of that. Because you get the genealogy done, you make sure you've got all the stats and the right people with whomever, and then they can go through and they get sealed. I'm sorry, something's in my eye, and it's most likely my finger, because that happens. But I think these eyelashes that are growing, 
sometimes curl down and get in my eyeball. <laughs> it's weird. So, be it known, and I'm sure you already do, that I do believe that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the kingdom of God being built up on this earth prior to the second coming. Jesus is coming. We don't know the hour or the day. Because they said if we did, then we'd be ready, right? You gotta be found ready when you're surprised. And they did compare it to like Noah and the ark. And I just don't think, I know some people don't understand that because my husband did not. And he's not my husband anymore. I gotta remember that. <laughs> But, when it says he comes like a thief in the night, it's just because you're not supposed to know when he's coming. And the same thing happened in the day of Noah. They were giving in marriage up until the end, you know, when the rains came. And there really was a Noah and the ark and a flood. I'm sorry about my eyes and everything else. I got a comment today. Someone said, I don't understand your channel. And it popped up on my feed and I want to know why. <laughs> so I don't know why. And so for... Someone is paying attention to my videos, okay? And they know what's inside of them. And so they are sending out to people that are of a like mind. Now, I'm very spiritual. I'm into Jesus Christ and the scriptures, sharing the word. But I'm also a marijuana advocate. And so you could get it because of that, or you could get it because of Jesus, or you could get it. I talk about the chosen a lot, but that's to do with Jesus. So when you get on my channel, I don't really know what happens when someone else gets on my channel, but you'll see either in my history or things that are alike, you'll see the chosen because I talk about it quite a bit. So there it is. And then, um, so that's what I'm thinking. But I give a lot of advice on a lot of different things. It's not just about religion and the scriptures. But I have endeavored to read scriptures on my channel. And then I like to give um, commentary when I do. Especially if it's of the Book of Mormon. Because that's my forte. That's where my expertise lies. Okay, that and the New Testament. Definitely into the New Testament. But the reason I started my channel was because of all these papers that I wrote years ago. I mean, 30 and 40 years ago, I was writing kind of like freestyle poetry. And they were analytical. In other words, I would analyze things observe, analyze, and put it together on paper. And they were just, some of them were just really, I'm going to say magnificent. <laughs> I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I had help. I had to have had help. And I think those papers that I wrote were not for me. They were for you. Through me. Okay. And I've been going to write a book. I mean, I've been going to put it together in a book forever. Just didn't know how to do it. And it didn't seem like it was big enough. And, you know, and life gets in the way. You just do other things and you put it aside. Well, I saved these papers all these years. And I did put them together in a notebook. Tried to figure out, you know, the secession, how I wanted it to be. And it is really good. And I know that I affected people's lives because I saw it.
because I went around sharing my stuff with all kinds of people. Mm, definitely. I have told some of those stories. So the thing to do would be, I know it would be a long process, but the thing to do would be go through all my videos. And if you don't, you know, my daughter told me, I do not have a long attention span. And see, my videos are long. <laughs> so I started making shorts because in the middle of my videos are some really great stuff. So I should have said are some great things. You know, talking about verbs being plural. <laughs> ah, English, the English language. What a trip. Anyway. I just wanted to jabber. I miss doing my videos, and I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do that. I think I'll still be able to walk and do my videos now. But I'll be putting everything together on my iPad because I have a lot more memory over there. It has caused me some trouble. So what should I say? I gave my card to three different people today and they came into the house. They were the Meals on Wheels ladies. There was two of them and then the caregiver. My card has my YouTube channel on it, which you guys are already on. And it also says Magical Healing Ointment, which is my concoction that has THC in it, not just CBD. CBD is great, and there's all kinds of great things, but it also has THC in it, which helps take pain away, which helps kill cancer cells, which uh, helps with mobility, helps with... Um, for older women, I don't know about the men folk, but for older women, it helps so much. It's an excellent, excellent lube. It enhances your senses. It makes you slick. So it's not so painful. It can be painful to someone who's dry. And no matter what kind of good love making happens, it doesn't always take care of that. It can be very painful. But my stuff, Makes it wonderful, okay? <laughs> I know firsthand that it does. And it doesn't turn into something caca. Because, you know, I've tried some things before and they just always are not cool. So I highly recommend my magical healing ointment <laughs> for a lot of things. Because it does, it takes arthritis pain away. It's edible. It's edible, guys. You understand what I'm saying? So not only can you stick it in your mouth and on your gums and all that stuff, but, you know, the most intimate of sexual activity is okay with my ointment. <laughs> and I'll stop at that. I do have some of it. Because I made a bunch. I need to go make some more. But I've got some wonderful stuff, guys. You should hit me up. Nevertheless, I'm trying these teeth, okay? Hopefully it will. It's got to be better. But I just don't think I can have the bottom teeth in. So it's still not exactly the way it should be. But it'll help with my lip. So I'll do that. Thank God I've been able to put them in and it hasn't been hurting and stuff, so. Anyway, I guess what I should say is you guys have a great day because you never know when you're going to see this. Right now it's in the middle of the night. It's around 1, 1 or 1.30 by now. That's what happens when I end up taking a nap a little earlier and then I get back up. But I do need to go to sleep. I need to get my schedule back on the right path. 
Anyway, people, happy trails. until we meet again and hopefully that'll be sooner than later and now reading the scriptures what a drag huh depends on who you are some people might like that i don't know that i liked the one i read tonight i didn't understand what the difference was between the two i would have to study and endeavor and i'm not intending to do that because i already believe I believe in Joseph Smith big time. And I have that correlation, like I said. My patriarchal blessing told me that, which is a blessing from my Father in Heaven. So it would behoove me to do what I'm supposed to do. So, if you find my stuff interesting, please share me, okay? Because I think what I've had to say is pretty interesting. Not all of it, you know, but there's usually some good stuff in all my videos, I would think. Just depends. You have to open up and let it in and just see. How does it resonate? You know, some things you just know are right. Some things you know. When you hear them, they hit you. <clears throat> They hit your understanding. It's like, whoa, really? Okay. But seriously, it is important to know who we are. We are children of God. All of us, no matter our shape or condition, are heirs to the throne. We're princes and princesses. Growing up into royalty, and you can't get more royal than God, okay? King of this, the kings on this earth, they're just kings of a nation, and, and they can be killed and taken away. That's usually what happens. Someone comes along and kills them and takes over their throne. Not cool. The millennium's going to be great. Jesus will be in charge. Jesus will reign on the earth for a thousand years during the millennium. And I'm not sure what that thousand years means, you know, because, okay, excuse me. The planet closest to God is Kolob. That was his first creation, probably after his own world that he lives on. I'm not quite sure. But it says that it's the first creation. And the time frame between us and that is one day in Kolob time is a thousand years for our time. So which time are they talking about? Which time frame are they talking about? A thousand years times a thousand years. Let's see, if one day to them as a thousand of our years can't can't even fathom how much a thousand years would be <laughs> you got 365 days in a year and that would be 365,000 years if you were to look at it that way so that's you know that isn't right <laughs> But it's neither here nor there. The point is, we're all going to be living in the millennium. And we will be coming and going, just like here on Earth. People are born and people die. If we let them. I talked about that in one of my videos, too. Because we're not letting people die like they're supposed to. We want them to live here forever. And it's kind of messing up stuff, you know? You probably don't know what I'm saying. But like population explosion, like all kinds of things being spent on medical things that don't need to be trying to keep everybody alive as long as we can. When maybe they're supposed to die. Maybe they're supposed to go on to that other realm, you know, in a timely fashion. 
making room for the other ones that are coming. Instead of killing the ones that are coming, you people, abortion is murder, unless in certain circumstances. You know, they've got it now where you, they can take a, a child from the mother right before it's going to be born and let it lay there and die. Do you think that's right? No, it is not. Crazy people in this world. You know, I believe that there are reasons for abortion. But early, early, early. Not waiting until later. And I don't know when the spirit quickens. Because I read about that recently, you know. Because it did say there is a time when the spirit quickens in the child. So I'm not sure when that is. But the point is, murder is bad. The worst sin. I mean, the very worst sin is knowing God and refusing. I mean, acting like you don't. I'm saying knowing for a fact and then denying him. That's the worst sin. But murder is right there. Not cool. And these babies that are coming to you are supposed to be your babies. So prevent them from being born. Prevent them from being conceived. First of all, that would be cool. But I know rape has a big deal in there. Rape and incest and all kinds of bad things out there. That is not the way for a child to begin. It's not right what's going on in this world. Chastity belts they used to have. Maybe we should have chastity belts. Lock those suckers up. <laughs> that would just be horrible, though. Can't even imagine. That had to have been disgusting. How would you even go to the bathroom, you know? Put you under lock and key. I can see, kind of see that because men, yeah, men, they think it's okay to take that most special thing away from a woman. You don't do that. And you deserve your up and comings. If you, you know, if you do that, you deserve what you get. Because that is horrid. And yes, it's happened to me. It's probably happened to so many women. And men. I've heard of it happening to men too. Now, I'm talking about uh, men being raped by men. Because that happens too. It's crazy out there in this world. So let's try to stay in the light. And if you, I was gonna say, put on that chastity belt. But do it in your head, you know, don't actually do the real thing, but stay out of bad places. Cover your bodies up. If you don't want someone to be lusting after you and taking you because uh, they can't help themselves, then you cover up. You don't wear you don't wear garments that make you appear so sexy because you're just asking for trouble. You think it's all great and stuff to be admired that way by so many, but it is not, people. Come into the light. Cover yourselves up. Know that you, you're responsible for part of it. You can't go around out there naked Making, making these guys go crazy and then expect them not to do something. That doesn't give them the right to do anything, but you're not helping the situation is what I'm saying, okay? You can look gorgeous and cover your body up at the same time. You do not have to be all nasty. If the shoe fits, wear it. The point is, think about it. And no... 
I did not ask for the trouble that I had. And it does affect you. It hurts. So, hold to the rod, the iron rod is the word of God. It will safely guide you through. So that's why we're out there trying to spread the word, people. Missionaries. There's a lot of missionaries out there. Put them to good use. You see some missionaries out riding their bikes. They always have a name tag on. And normally they're in uh, suit type clothes, white shirt, tie, the guys. But they have girls too. But they do always wear a name tag. And if you've ever had any questions or wonderings about the church. Get a hold of them. Don't be afraid of them. There's the light of Christ. The light of Christ is in those missionaries. And it's in me too. When I'm not all mad. And I try not to be mad or stay mad. I'm like a mad dog. No, kidding. Nevertheless, you guys. I probably should be shutting up. I need to go to bed. You guys take care, okay? Love your families. Love your children. Love your parents. Love your siblings. And love that stranger out on the street. For those that you have a chance to meet. <laughs> Had to do a little rhyme there. Anyway. So I will say good night until it be tomorrow. Thanks for checking out my videos. I hope I don't cause any sorrow. See that rhyme? I had to do it. General conference is going to be coming up. It's usually the first week in April. April 6th. Here's a special little tidbit, guys. April 6th is Jesus Christ's birthday. His real birthday. April 6th is the day the church was organized. Specifically because of that reason. Jesus Christ's birthday. I can't prove it, but in my readings, I figured it out that Jesus Christ, I might have figured it out wrong, but I'm pretty sure he died the morning of his 34th birthday. He lived a complete 33 years. That's a trip. When I was up on that mountain doing all that studying, that's when I figured out a few of those things. Like the 200 years is real important. So I was trying to mention that before. So 200 years from when? Because the Book of Mormon came out. That is one of the signs. Like the fig tree? One of the signs of the times is that the Book of Mormon is here. So, what year? what process and then 200 years from then or approximate 200 years from then so i know it's not 1820 because that was the first vision and then it took clear to 1830 i think 1830 was the year the church was organized so the book of mormon had to have come out before that okay it took him four years to get the book of mormon i mean to get the place before he started translating the plates. So I don't have all my timeline in my head, but 1836 is the year the temple opened. So it's in between 1830 and 1836. And then you go 200 years, well, that puts you here, 2000. 
we're at 24 right now. So right now is about the time that he probably, no, 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 no. The first vision was uh, when he prayed in the grove and he saw Jesus and God in the air. They talked to him, they called him by name. And then I don't think, I'm not positive, but the angel Moroni, I think came to him several years later. You know, he was a young thing when he had that first vision. I'm not sure his age. But then when the angel Moroni did come, he, um, he showed him where the plates were and he took him there every year for four years before he let them. He couldn't touch them. He couldn't get them. And then he got them. So I would think the publication of the Book of Mormon, first you had to translate it and then get it printed and then start giving it out. So when does the time frame really start, you know? But somewhere in there, somewhere between the publication of the Book of Mormon and the organization of the church. And when the church was organized, there were just six people. So, I mean, that's still the very beginnings. But the word is here. The truth is here. And that Book of Mormon, all important people, you really should grasp a hold to it and read it. Now, I've read some of it to you, but really I've read very little. There's a lot more. And I should go back to the very beginning, just like the manual that we just got this year is doing. Um, I've got it packed away right now, but my I've got that Sunday School manual, which um, they're studying the Book of Mormon this year. So it's really good. How apropos. So I should endeavor to do that. And maybe take you guys through the book too. I don't know. But the important thing is, you can put that app on your phone or on your tablet, your computer. Gospel Library has all the scriptures. And it's the King James Version of the Bible that we believe in, as far as it's translated correctly. But we still study it and we compare between the Book of Mormon and that. The Book of Mormon clarifies a lot of things. Like I said, there it is in, in print about Noah and the great flood. And also the Jaredites. There's just a lot of great things. But see, the Jaredites tells you about the Tower of Babel. And I think that's another one of those things that's hard for people to believe. So kind of proves that the Bible's true, okay, as far as it's translated correctly. That's a good thing to remember. So anyway, I do love all you guys because you're my brothers and sisters, and I only endeavor to tell you these things because I'm supposed to, and you need to know. And you're not going to know unless someone shares it with you. So I hope that I'm doing that somewhat. Okay? Love your children. They're only with you for a short period of time. And then they're gone with the world, man. Away they go. Yeah. <laughs> Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Da 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 da. That was what was playing in my head just now. <laughs> Tripping. I have been praying. I have been endeavoring to do that. So I've always felt like he's got better things to do than listen to me. But that is one of the things in the Jaredite record is. Jesus 
scolded them for not praying. We called it a sin not to pray. So we better do some praying. Talk to the Lord, okay? Talk to God. Now, that one is a hard one, too. Who is God? Okay, so there's God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. When you pray, you pray to your Heavenly Father, which is Jesus' Father, too. And then you pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You say it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how you seal the prayer or how you end the prayer. And all things are done in the name of Jesus Christ. So, if you want your prayers answered, it might be nice to do that. Now, I know. If you don't do it perfect, he's still going to hear you. But I'm just telling you, the keys to prayer, and I did a video on that. My Father in Heaven is the very first thing. And it's kind of like you want to give some respect and thankfulness and stuff in the beginning of your prayer. So the four steps are you call upon him, then you thank him for your blessings, then you ask him for some blessings, and then you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Very easy. And then realize that he loves you, and he'll be so glad to hear from you. And you'll feel peace. And then, you know, if you really are asking for help and needing some advice and stuff, you wanna give some quiet time. You wanna to try to be able to listen and it's thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, don't ask for things that you ought not to ask for. You can ask for help. Ask for guidance. Ask to know the truth. Ask for understanding when you're reading the scriptures so you know what they're trying to tell you. I know that I've read things that weren't even there because I wasn't able to find them again. But you know, like reading between the lines sometimes. Inspiration is real. Revelation, personal revelation is real. Faith is what it takes. Believing. Believe like a little child. Like your, your heavenly parents are not going to hurt you. They're going to help you. I know you can tell I don't like to say goodbye. <laughs> I'm still here. But I'm going to go. So, you guys have a great one. Try to have the love of Christ in you. It's a great feeling. And share it. Be kind to those around you. And smiles are catchy. And they make you feel good when someone smiles back. And they can't hardly help it. You got a big old smile right at them and, and, the, and you got eye contact there smiling back. I can tell you. I know for a fact. Okay, so, good night. Have a great one. And I'll see you soon.